Hello, everyone. Welcome to the stock specific uh, class here for Thursday, February the 2nd. Uh, as always, if you have any questions during the week or any questions I don't get to here in the live class, make sure you send those to jerry at traderspro.com. I'll be happy to answer those for you. Although typically I usually try to answer emails in the evenings. Uh, and so uh, just be aware of that. It may take uh, a little bit of time to get the response back. Uh, I definitely don't do it, usually don't do it during market hours because I usually have so many different things going on during that time. But um, all right, uh, again, just an audio check again. If, if you're hearing any sort of clicking or annoying noises on the audio, please let me know. I can dial back in and usually that'll get rid of it. Um, if, if, I, if I don't hear anything though, I'm gonna go ahead and proceed. Uh, Obviously, we've had a pretty good run the last um, uh, few days, uh, particularly yesterday. It really uh, exploded after the, the Fed meeting. Um, it's one of the things I always uh, worry about with those binary events is you never know. It's, it's like an earning announcement. You just never know which way the, the market's going to, to move. But it's also an exercise in, in not trying to figure out you know, you don't need to watch the press conference. You don't need to watch the announcement. You don't need to dissect every word that Chairman Powell says. That's what everyone else is is doing. And all we care about is what what do the traders, uh, you know, what's the market reaction to it? Is the market reacting bullish to it or bearish to it? Um, you know, that's really all, all we care about is, uh, what is what is the chart showing us. And uh, obviously, the so far the markets have just really exploded. And not only that, you're seeing money pour into really risky areas. Now, I don't know if that's a good thing in these conditions. Uh, one of the things I keep warning people about, because you know, I heard I had one person say, "This is this is uh, 2020 all over again," referring to when COVID hit and the the Fed uh, dropped interest rates to zero, and and uh, the government uh, issued. Uh, stimulus checks, you know, to, to, to keep the, the economy from crashing. That's, this is not that same situation. And um, in fact, it's just the complete opposite. And, uh, and so that's kind of what I worry about is there's a lot of these retail traders uh, and that's really a, a big, uh, a big portion of what's going on is all these people are seeing the headlines. They're, they're thinking, Okay, market's taken off again. They haven't been following the market for the last year because it's been in, it's been going down. But now, and, and what are they piling into? They're piling into these stocks they used to make a lot of money on. Carvana, that which they remember at two hundred dollars a share, is now at uh, well was at like like three dollars a share, and and over the course of a week is up to twenty dollars a share. I mean that's ridiculous. I I mentioned this I think last week but that that company's on its way uh, out of business, uh, it, they're likely to go bankrupt at some point in time. Um, but you know what? That's that, that's what uh, what could happen. In fact, I call the this type of behavior um, buying a buying panic, um, and uh, it's when people are it's the market suddenly takes off in a big way. Everyone's talking about it on the news, and then you start to get a feeling of I'm missing out. I'm missing out. Um, by the way, if you're feeling that way, um, and you're feeling like, man, I need something to trade. I gotta, I gotta trade something. I gotta get in. Um, and you're looking back and saying, man, if I only would have bought Carvana, you know, a week ago, why didn't I buy it? Um, and make all this money. Then if you're feeling like that, then that's an area of your trading you've got to immediately work on, which is controlling your emotions. Uh, because that's the same reason why You'll, you'll be on the wrong side of most of, of the moves is if you're emotionally making those decisions, it's, it's always a bad thing. It never ends well. You may have a lucky stretch here or there, but it usually ends, ends pretty badly. So, um, so be, you know, be aware of that. Now, one of the things that I had to learn early in my trading career, cause I got caught up in some of these, these, uh, buying frenzies is that over time, what you learn is that, you know what? I don't have to chase the, a move. The market will give me another opportunity. Um, I'm going to get another chance. 
and you just have to be you just have to be patient and look for the right moment to get in. And I'm going to show you today why it's pretty dangerous to be jumping in right now, at least just right now within these next few days. You might want to wait to see if the market can pull back a little bit. Um, it's really taken off, and, and it's just this is just a dangerous area to chase at, at this point. And that happens to me most of the time when the market first takes off in, a, in an opposite direction. Um, you know, as a trend trader, you're focused on what the current trade is. For the last, uh, you know, boy, year, we've been watching the downtrend and, and, you know, when the rallies, we've been looking at the rallies in the downtrend as being just that, rallies within the bear market or bear market rallies. When we start to transition and break that, that trend line, that declining trend line, it started to show that shift. Are we shifting now towards a, a bullish trend? You know, you still don't know yet. And then the market just takes off like this. Again, it's, there's a tendency to say, "Oh man, I should have just gone long, or I should have, should have, I should have gotten in, or, or should I get in now?" If this is a true uptrend and bull market, uh, start of a bull market, you're going to get tons of opportunities, especially since bull markets tend to last uh, two to three to four times longer than bear markets, and so you know you're going to get plenty of opportunities to to uh, to get in. Now, but this is where today is where those direction alerts are going to uh, be important uh, because uh, what what are we what are the direction alerts telling us? They're telling us uh, overbought, oversold, and um, and are we stretched? Are we are we getting a little stretched on a move? Now, one thing I, we haven't been really focusing on or paying attention to is the long term market signals. They don't change very often, but it is worth noting here that. If you look at this uh, this line right here, you can notice that it, it has been kind of moving up as the market moves up. Now we're still stuck over here on the far uh, left side of the of the uh, bear market uh, category here, uh, and the reason for that, even though we've been moving up right here, is it's not going to start to move until you you get above that minus five, and so minus five is right in about right here. So if we keep if we keep rallying up, and this starts to get into this area right here, you'll start to see this bar slide back over. So from a from the the software standpoint, it's still not signaling a bull market. I know people there are people out there on CNBC and other channels that are saying this is a new bull market and they're calling it. Be careful because you gotta you gotta understand how CNBC works. Um, CNBC, their 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 number one priority is not to help you; it's to sell advertising, to make money. Okay, which is your number one priority, my number one priority. We all want to make money, but you got to make sure you understand their in what what they're what they're trying to do. They're not actively trying to help you. They're I mean, if they can along the way, I'm sure they'll feel good about that. But uh, they're just trying to provide content on a channel and sell advertising to to pay for their salaries. Okay, and um, what happens almost all day long is you see different people you've never seen before come on the show and they interview them and they tell them their opinions. Usually, these people are are running funds, different uh, hedge funds, or or their their money managers in some way. And um, they're either trying to get their their name out there so people recognize who they are. So when they call people up to invest in their fund uh, and they say, you know, I, I, I'm so and so, I've, I've been on CNBC a lot, you know, or they see that they they see them on CNBC, it gives their account credibility. It's easier to make uh, to bring in money for people to invest in them. Um, and what they do is they pay CNBC to do the interview. Okay, so you better understand that uh, when you're listening to some of these people that, um, that if they're pitching you stocks or things like that, they're either trying to even get you to invest in a fund, or they're they're trying to make a call on a on a stock that if it works out, they can say, hey, I told you on CNBC. And you're seeing some of these people come out and say, okay, we're in a bull market. This is the start of a bull market. 
And what they're trying to do is get their call in early. So if it does happen, they can come back and say, hey, I told you right at the beginning, it worked out. The problem, though, is that and this is why I always, I'm always skeptical of, um, of uh, big calls is that uh, when they don't work out, you never hear about them or they you know, come up with an excuse later on as to um, what changed it, their, their call or what have you. But they'll make the bold call so that they can come back. Kathy Wood did this. Everyone uh, called Kathy Wood a genius when she bought into all these risky uh, stocks in the beginning of uh, – of the COVID bottom and they took off and they made all this money and, and, and she was the genius of wall street at that time. And, and anytime she come on, you were supposed to listen to what she was recommending and, and go, go trade it. Well, you saw what happened to her fund. It came all the way back down. Now it's kind of coming off life support um, recently, but uh, you know, she held those same stocks all the way down. And you know, that, that, to me is the dumbest thing I can think of. Why would you, why would you hold, why would you just hang on to something and, and all the way down to when some of these stocks are, you know, $5 stocks. So, you know, just be careful. Um, that's why the software is, is it, the software is not trying to, to, um, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> to, to, uh, to, it doesn't have an ego. It's not trying to predict anything or, or anything like that. It's just going to tell you when the, the calculation, the market um, algorithm, which is over to a bull market. Now, again, it doesn't mean that we can't recognize a bullish trend and trade a bullish trend ahead of that. Um, that's not my point, but to, we're going to wait until this officially gets into a bull market uh, before we're st going to start calling it a bull market. <coughs> Sorry, I've got, I'm always congested through the whole winter, it seems. All right, so you can see now that we've had this move, and we've moved up even higher today, uh, although we got a little bit of a mixed market today. Dow, uh, at least before class started, was down versus the NASDAQ up big. Dow was down, NASDAQ was up big. Um, obviously, with the, the Facebook or Meta earnings, um, and so this should bounce a little bit further to the right uh, after we update uh, tonight. But as of yesterday's update, we've already started to move into the extreme reversal risk. Now, you hear me say all the time that you can still get into the extreme reversal risk area and still get even more overbought. Usually, I'll, I'll cut this box in, in, in half right there. If we start to get to the right side of that, that's when I really think we're in, in extreme overbought conditions. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't see the market uh, pull back or come uh, reverse in the early part of that extreme reversal risk range. Um, once you get in there, you, you have to, at, at the very least, acknowledge that you're in a, a an overbought market condition. Um, but that's usually where it's really extreme is when it gets to the right side. If it gets to the right side, it usually means within days you're either going to pull back. Again, you don't have to pull back to uh, alleviate an overbought condition. You can start to move sideways to alleviate that overbought condition. A lot of times you'll start to move back. Um, but we're, we're getting close to that. Um, we're getting stretched. The rubber band is getting stretched a little bit to the upside. And that's what I'm saying. You, this, is the, this is where the software becomes valuable because you know, if you're feeling that need to go chase, you're you're chasing into a stretched market, and you're probably getting in right when a lot of these stocks are about to pull back and correct, and and likely give you a better entry point. But it's not just that. It's it, the pullback after you get a run like that. The pullback tells you usually again none of these chart patterns work perfectly, but when when you get the basics down, the the pullback will tell you whether the uptrend is more likely to continue or whether it, it could be it could be a false breakout or false upward move okay if if suddenly we have a couple of days where we sell off hard we come way down that vix spikes up in a big way and this looks impulsive we, we get three or four or five days where you're coming straight down or something like that that tells you that that rally it, it, it might have been a false rally. You might be actually going back into a trend reversal. 
Um, maybe you, it tries to rally again off of that and it's choppy on the rally. That's a bearish type of behavior. You're probably going to get another move down. Um, now, on the other hand, if we pull back, we do have a pullback or we move sideways. But if we do have a pullback where we get a day or two where we pull back and then we, we rally back up a little bit and then you you know you, you pull back a little bit more, but you're not dropping big, you're not seeing the big big spike up in a huge way. That's a consolidation. That's 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 alleviating that overbought condition. It's also telling you that the uptrend, that there's buyers there, that up, the buyers are preventing the, the stock or the market to drop significantly. And then this is that good entry point to re-enter is once that correction is done, usually you're going to get another one of these impulsive moves. But this time you're getting that impulsive move up from this area in here, or maybe even slightly in the buy range there where it's it's come back. So it, it can it can run now again without getting extremely overbought. Um, so now again, some people they're they're like, I don't I don't care about timing. Um, I don't care if I'm getting in um, early or getting in be right because it's about to correct, um, and and they have a longer time frame for their trade. Okay, that's fine. Um, you know, I hope you have a whole system around that that you're you're basing that on, and you, you know exactly how to you know recognize when you're wrong and all that kind of stuff. Play stops. Because remember, you, you don't, we haven't seen the pullback yet over here. What if it does have a big, huge move down? You got in right at the top. You're getting killed again as it's it, as the downtrend is continuing. Maybe we do lead into a panic sell-off that, that we were still waiting for. You know, I don't know where to put the stop. For me personally, I don't know where to put the stop in a situation like that. What I like about getting in on these pullbacks not, and not just trying to guess when it's going to take off, but you get the pullback and then it starts to move, is then I can get in when it looks like it's starting to move and I can get my stop down below that correction. That's where I know I'm wrong. If it comes back down, I'm probably wrong or it's probably a longer, larger correction. Maybe it's it's still chopping around a little bit. Um, but I have a, it's easier to place my stop. So, um, so that's that's why I don't want to chase this move. I want to wait for that pullback, see how that pullback looks. And um, now breadth is still um, in the high range. It's not into the extreme range. This is showing that we could we could push into that extreme range. Although there has been a lot of breadth in in the recent moves. I, I believe today there's well. Today, I, we, we are seeing a little bit of a mixed market today, so the breadth wouldn't be as strong as it has been the last couple of days. Um, now, well, I'll talk about that when we look at the charts here, but um, but this is showing that it can still, it can still, we're not in the extreme reversal risk yet, but we're getting close. Obviously, sentiment's still there. So you've got two out of the three that are in that extreme range. Um, and so we're, I would interpret that as the start of getting stretched a little bit here. So, um, you know, it, it, it could, could st now how I would approach this, let me sh if I was already in a trade, and I, I had gotten in earlier for whatever reason, I wouldn't be jumping out just because the market is starting to get stretched, okay? Um, what I could start to do is maybe move stops up a little bit. If I had a trailing stop, start to maybe tighten the stops a little bit. Um, you know, those are some things you can do. Um, lock and making sure you're locking in some of your gains at that point. Um, so in this condition we're in right now, I, if I was already in, I'm not just jumping out because, again, it could run for a little while. You just don't want to be getting into a whole bunch of new trades when the market is starting to get stretched. That it, hopefully that makes sense. You don't want to be chasing um, in, the, in, in getting into new trades in that, um, in that type of condition. Uh, buy sell ratios, uh, you know, we had, it's still about the same as it was on Tuesday. We're, we're wide, but we could get even wider. I mean, we, we are a little stretched here. But again, just like those other indicators are showing us, it could it could become a little bit more stretched still. Um, and then this sentiment indicator is getting real close. Now this one is really, when it hits that red line, it's really close to. I mean, it, 
and it doesn't always hit it. You can see very rarely does it hit it, but when it does, it, it usually it usually leads to a pullback um, or or a consolidation of some sort. Like I said, it can alleviate it just by moving sideways as well. Um, but this is getting pretty stretched. Uh, it's worth knowing this. And again, it'll be interesting to see when this updates tonight how much closer that red line you get. So you can you watch for that tomorrow. You get real close to that. Um, just be real cautious at that point. You don't want to really, really be loading up on trades at that at that point. All right, let's get to the chart here. And uh, we were watching this area right here on on um, Monday. So Friday we had kind of hit it and then so it pulled back from it a little bit. And then Monday we had this. We closed below the low of the previous day. That was a bearish uh, candle uh, out of a resistance area right there. A lot of times you'll it, it signals a decline or pullback. The fact that it, 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 it usually you get some sort of a move down off of that type of price action, at least an open lower, and then it, maybe it rallies up. This one didn't even open lower. It immediately went back right up right there, and that that uh, was an indication of of um, you know, buyers, the, these dips are getting bought. They're getting bought immediately. They were showing some buying resilience there. Now, we still had, you know, the Fed meeting and some of these earnings coming out. Uh, and and that was kind of the big, that's been the question mark all week. Uh, still, it could be a little bit of a question mark uh, with, we've got Apple, Amazon, Google earnings out after the bell today. We've got the earnings report or jobs report, excuse me, um, tomorrow morning, which all of this is going to be incorporated into tomorrow morning because all of those earnings reports come out after the bell. The jobs report comes out before the bell tomorrow. Man, tomorrow's open is going to be pretty wild. Or it'll be interesting to see see what happens there. But, um, um, but uh, so we it, it reversed it yesterday. We broke out. And so what this has now done here is is it's given us let me go back to the, the longer term chart here. Let me go to a two year chart. So now what's happened is we we broke the trend that downtrend line. Uh we actually came back and retested it right here when it pulled back a little bit. We've now broken to a higher high. You've got a higher low right here, and um, and it's, so it's now acting. It is acting like an uptrend now as it's broken out of these key areas. Okay, the only problem is it's now it did it very quickly right here. So you, what you want to do is wait to see how it pulls back. Does it pull back? You know, do we break out above this area and then pull back to it? I'll zoom back in and we'll look at that again. Now, one of the things I talked about um, it, uh, last uh, was it Tuesday, it might have been Tuesday or even might have been the last Thursday, um, you know, the possibility that, it, it, that this is just wave A, this is A, B, C for wave B, and then maybe we at, at some point we roll over and, and do get that, that panic sell off. I don't know if that'll happen again which which what continues to bother me is never had a major market bottom without a panic sell off and and uh, now I know I know some of you don't have that issue because you've never seen you might have ever seen a panic sell off and so you're like well I, I've never experienced one anyway so what do I care um, that can sometimes be the curse of, of trading for a long period of time as you see so many things over and over that again you expect you expect the market to always behave the way it's always behaved um, but the, I will be watching this area here this is the next high to look at right here you know how do we react when we get to that high and and by the way if if it did reverse, I, I would be surprised if it if it broke out of that area there, uh, looking even more bullish, and then 
and then reverse back down. But it really depends on how it looks. You know, how, how things look in these different areas and, and need, you need some confirmation. Um, as a one or two day pullback is, is not likely to give you any confirmation of a bigger move down. But if you did start to see some heavier selling, big, huge down day in one of these areas, then, then, you know, that, that would kind of be the signal that that could, that could be, uh, what could be playing out. Yeah, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to bring this up. I'm going to try not to bring this up again because it's really irrelevant right now with the, the market has got bullish momentum right now. And I want to focus on trading this move right here, looking for opportunities to take advantage of that because it should move higher from here. It should get back up to this previous high at a minimum. The only problem is, is that you'd, you'd want to see it, um, go back to that six month chart. Because it's getting stretched, you can see the, the S, SPY, you're, you're, you're getting to the right side of the, the extreme reversal risk. NASDAQ 100 is all the way there. Look at the Qs. All the way to the right side. I mean, all that money is piled into those, those riskier trades. Um, by the way, the Dow has been lagging. And this makes a lot of sense um, because, you know, when you see that type of explosion in those riskier trades, the NASDAQ trades and the small caps and things like that, that money's got to come from somewhere, right? Where's that money coming from? Well, these professional traders, obviously a lot of it is fueled by some of those retail traders that are like, here we go again. We're jumping back into Carvana. The game stopped. <laughs> Bed, bath, and beyond. Um, but it's also these big institutional traders that are looking to, if, if we are in a, a risk on environment now, I'm going to start getting out of my oil stocks and my, um, energy plays and, and, uh, all these other utility stocks, all these other places where they, they've had, um, uh, that they've ridden up, um, now they'll take the profits on those and they'll move back into these these uh the, these riskier areas or what have you there's a, so there's a, it's showing you a little bit of a rotation going on again it it <laughs> worries me a little bit because the conditions are still i mean we're still not seeing the full effects of of uh the rate hikes you got money coming out out of the top quality companies and going into these riskier companies um you know, but again, we'll, if that's going to continue to happen, we'll trade that trend until it, it changes. Although I don't necessarily want to, I'm, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to touch uh, Carvana anytime soon. But um, but that it kind of explains that that mixed mixed condition there. And you can see it's it's had lower highs, uh, you know, with the other indexes kind of exploding higher. So, but it is worth noting that that um, you know, the market is getting a little bit stretched. And if you look at today, the candle today, you've got a little bit of an indecision candle now. We're still an hour and a half away from the market close, so that could change. But uh, but uh, if it closes like that, it, again, an indecision candle does not, it, 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 all it means is that there's there's now a little bit of a battle between buyers and sellers in this area right here. What you would need is call, you never would trade a, just an indecision candle, but what you'd look for is, you know, do, would you close below today's low on, on Friday? Uh, you, if it shakes it off, it would move above today's high tomorrow. Um, and what makes it difficult is I could, I could, I could see where everything that comes out, uh, tonight and tomorrow morning, the jobs report in the, in the, uh, Earnings on Apple and Google and I think could be could be positive, and the market just has another move up tomorrow, and then okay now it's like we're stretched. What else is there to look forward to? There's not a whole lot next week. Uh, there are more earnings coming out, but all the big people have, have reported earnings, the major ones, and and you got the Fed and the jobs report. It's like there's there's likely to be a letdown. Um, what else is there to kind of fuel the move higher at that point? 
And so it wouldn't shock me if it if it does have another burst and then and then pulls back or that whatever the, the jobs report and earnings reports could be negative and and that could lead to a little bit of a pullback. But that's okay. We 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 would love to see it pull back to to give us another opportunity. Now, you know, what would make sense is if we did move a little bit higher and then pulled back to that breakout area right here. It happens a lot. You break out, pull back to retest the breakout, and then that would be a great place to enter in uh, for new trades if it were to kind of behave that way. It doesn't always behave that way, but um, but that's that's what I would kind of be looking at. And it could do it from here too. Does it pull back from today's move and move a little bit sideways along this breakout area? Or even if it does break back below that breakout area, is it is it looking like an ABC or choppy sideways? The pullback is more choppy, more sideways. That would be something that uh, would indicate that the that that uh, uptrend could continue. Um, the Nasdaq again, we look at the bigger picture of this. It's lagged for so long. I mean, we were just a couple weeks ago. We were. We were sitting right here, just not too far away from those October lows. We were very close to that. You can see that there's that chase now, um, um, and it, and what could start to happen if this is going to be a longer uh, uptrend, what'll probably happen is you'll start to see the Dow significantly underperform, and um, obviously all the tech start taking off. Um, and you would see continue to see that to, and and the small caps too you'd see that now small caps you can see of our they're already coming up here to test they're almost testing the the august highs right there that's a very bullish sign too that the the small caps are 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 typically leading the way they seem to be leading this this they are leading this rally and um but again like i said you're you're getting extreme probably do to pull back a little bit you would want to chase that move right there but that's a good signal a good bullish signal right there that uh, that those those particular indexes are are taken off um, I was a little bit concerned with with bonds though I, I would ex I was expecting bonds to break out on on this um, uh, you know the market has been kind of moving in the same direction as as bonds recently doesn't always but has been recently um, we talked about this being possibly a little bit of a, a correction bullish correction you have impulsive up moving sideways still looks like it should break out um, but you got a little bit of a bearish reversal candle today maybe that that delays a breakout for a little bit um, but ultimately, it's acting like it wants to go higher, and and so I would anticipate that it, it should um, continue in that direction. And as I, I'll stick with what I said before, you know, this is going to be the key area here. This is going to be the key area down here. Break above here, that's bullish. Break down there, that's bearish. The fact that we've already retraced so much of that move down that we're all the way up here very high probability that it, it breaks out to the upside um, but having said that one of the frustrating things over the last for me over the last uh, couple weeks or so a few weeks is that uh, a lot a lot the, the market has been making a lot of low lower probability moves I mean on some of the candle formations it almost always work it's it they haven't um you know some of the chart patterns that almost always work some of them haven't and so um th but that's what the market does it has to make the lower probability move sometimes otherwise you know everyone would know exactly what's going to happen next you can't know exactly what's going to happen next it's just when you get a string of lower probability moves in a row that uh that um, makes things uh, frustrating. Um, yeah, the market might be pulling back a little bit now. It, 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 like I said, it's kind of in that 
in that um, it's in that um, um, indecision candle overbought condition. Wouldn't be surprising if it if it pulls back a little bit. Gold is sold off now again. This uh, it could be just well. There's a couple things here. We'll look at the dollar chart. The dollar chart is was rallying a little bit. Um, that that has caused commodities to to uh, be a little bit weaker. There's also again a question mark about inflation. Uh, is inflation coming down dramatically? That might maybe cause a, a change in the movement of gold. Um, I'm not getting out of my gold trades off of just one move. In fact, this looks like it, it, you know we we were due to get some sort of a correction. We you know we were getting a little stretched there. Um, we'll see if we kind of uh, you know pull back a little bit. That'd actually be healthy for the trend, and um, we'll keep an eye on the dollar movement as well because that'll probably have a, a lot to do with it as well. In fact, let me go to the dollar first, and then you can see we had the big drop yesterday in the dollar, but then it's kind of reversed it today. Now that that's a as of right now that's a bullish inside day would you you'd expect to see another bullish move off of that um, but you know back here you can see we move sideways you dip down you came back up a little bit but then you came back down so it's you know short term it's looking a little bit more bullish for the dollar but the downtrend is still in play and so I'm, I'm still going to assume the trend is down until I see significant changes, a big rally in the dollar that would, you know, that or, or three or four days in a row where the dollar moves up, that might be a little bit more significant, more of an impulsive move up is what I might look for there. Oil, um, now oil had a little bit of a bullish reversal candle. It had a little bit of a hammer formation there, but it's faded a little bit off the highs. This is why I don't pay too much attention to the candle formations until the last half hour of the market day because it's really how they look at the close. Um, we're still kind of in this range um, right here. You could draw a trend line through here that we're kind of touching. Um, so, and with the with it acting coming off that those that trend line a little bit, does this end up being a little bit of a bullish candle? If so, maybe it, it oil starts working its way back up. But there again, the, the weakness of, of uh, particularly energy right now is uh, a lot of professional traders have made money on the energy trade. They need to put money to work in, in some of these riskier areas if they want to get into it. That's going to be a little bit of a headwind for some of the oil stocks. Um, if um, if if uh, that if that rotation continues, and then the VIX, I guess another thing that's bothered me was the VIX um, was the VIX down below 20. The market's breaking out. The VIX is down below 20, though. Um, I think we're starting to see a little bit of that today. Now, what do I always tell you about when you're you, first of all, you got to compare the VIX to the S&P 500. Don't compare it to the Dow or the Nasdaq. But whenever the, the S&P 500 and the VIX are moving in the same direction, you want to pay attention. And um, today you've had the S&P up and the VIX is up. And what that tells you is that those professional traders are hedging a little bit. They're recognizing that this market is getting a little stretched and they're buying some of those protective puts while they're cheap. And just in case it pulls back a little bit, they're hedged a little bit if it pulls back. Um, not not showing any panic or anything. Panic is up here at 30. Concern is probably in the 24, 25 area. So there's just no, you know, there's a little bit of a reaction there. We'll see what that leads to. Does it does that signal a little bit of a top here where we pull back? We'll see. Uh, remember too, there's a lot going on overnight those big earnings the jobs report if i'm a big fund manager and there's a binary event the market can go either way it could make a big move either way off of that i might want to start to protect myself a little bit although 
I would have expected the same thing right before the Fed announcement yesterday, and we didn't see that. The, the VIX just came straight down, <laughs> or was just down. It surged a lot after the it – sur- it was like right in here, and then it surged down to those lows. But – the, the, what, do you, what I want to point out here, though, too, is that this is the bottom of the, the of the VIX range within a bull market. So if you're already in a bull market, the market is um, is is rallying. Um, a lot of times when it gets down into this 15, 16 area on the VIX, that's when you got to be careful that you could be pulling back or be ready for a pullback. Now again, those pullbacks are usually just the pullbacks within the uptrend, but you you want to be aware of that that. that you know that that would be a signal that you could start to pull back a little bit, and usually you'll bounce between 20 and 15 in the bull market. You don't usually get big panic sell-offs because the market doesn't drop very dramatically. Everyone's buying the dip during the during a bull market. Um, but again, the fact that we're not in a bull market yet and we're still we're so close to even the lowest range that you would usually expect. Uh, this is this is really a dangerous place to be chasing right here. There's very a pretty high probability we'll see a, a little bit of a pullback here, probably within the next week. Um, we'll have to keep an eye on that, but that um, that's what I would expect. All right, uh, chip stocks again, really taking off, um, leading leading the the Nasdaq 100. And then you got the transports. Now we pointed this out on Tuesday that you know it looks like you have a little bit of an inverse head and shoulders pattern, looked like a very bullish pattern on transports. In the last two days, we've really exploded. Now, keep in mind, what's the rule of thumb of a inverse head and shoulders pattern? Well, you can usually take the distance of the top of the the bull to the or, or top. This is kind of a cup with handle pattern too. Either way. Top of the range to the bottom of the range, the, the, or the bottom of the head to the shoulders, or whatever you want to call it, project that distance upward, and you can see that we're pretty darn close to that. So there's another reason to be a little bit cautious to to be buying into this as well. Um, it's kind of made that move off of that pattern there. Um, but by the way, this is a good example of why I like this pattern because a lot of times you do get those explosive moves out of it. Or it doesn't always, it's not always explosive. It may just kind of gradually work its way up to that area. But it's a very bullish um, uh, pattern. We pointed that out um, earlier. Um, Bitcoin also taking off. Um, it's faded a little bit off the highs, though, too. Due to probably pull back a little bit. But um, we talked about this is, is possibly bottoming out back in here. When it had those those conditions of the bottom. Now, when you get those conditions, panic sell off. Nobody feels like buying it. It doesn't always mark the exact bottom. Um, it just means that you're very close to a bottom. So could Bitcoin come down and retest that? Yeah, we've seen that happen before. Doesn't have to, but um, but it's definitely had those conditions of a of, of a bottom. Um, and by the way, today I'll, I'll go over if you're looking at stocks to trade that are kind of tied into Bitcoin that you can, you know, if you don't want to trade Bitcoin, but you want to trade the Bitcoin move, these stocks tend to move with Bitcoin. I'll, I'll point some of those out to you um, if you want to put them in a watch list. High yield corporate bonds, I added this back to the list uh, just because, um, well, mostly because what we were seeing this last week was the market was going higher, but there was a, you were getting lower highs on the, the high yield corporate bonds did get a breakout today uh, higher, although that's a bearish reversal candle right there. Probably just means it pulls back a little bit and probably keeps this a consolidation right here. But um, the fact that it did break out higher is a pretty is a pretty good bullish sign. All right. So we're in a little bit of a stretch condition, but I do want to go over a few stocks that uh, that we could consider under the new buys. Um, I like this IMCR 99 strength rank. And what I like about this is you've got a big run up right here, kind of a corrective type move down here. 
impulsive up right through here, and then you've, you've kind of corrected back down about a 50% retracement of that move, and then now you're moving back up again. Let's switch this over to signals. Has gone back to a buy signal. We went back to a buy signal yesterday, which is why it's on the new buy list. Um, now, it's getting close to a breakout right here. Could you just wait for it to break out? Yeah, you could. That could be a little bit of additional confirmation. By the way, uh, as with most of these measurements, if you break out of a range like that, again, you can usually take the range of the last correction, which was right here, and project that upward. I mean, this is just something that, that just always, it just it works so many times that it's just it's just spooky. Here's a here's the range of this correction right here. You can take the the bottom of the range, the top of the range. When it breaks out, take that distance, project it upward. Look, it went that almost that exact distance and then started to pull back. I mean, it it's it doesn't always do it. I don't want to, you know. Uh, you know, kind of create this false sense of confidence, but it does it often enough that it, it becomes automatic to me, um, and that's what I have to be careful of. Is that sometimes I just say, you know, sometimes I can look at something like this and and just be like, oh, okay, it could get up into here. Because you've got here's your correction. If you break out of that range, it should go up about that far. And so what happens is, is it what happens over time is that you see something like that and immediately just within seconds it, it it looks bullish to you and then it takes a couple more seconds for your mind to catch up as to why it looks bullish it's like oh yeah following this pattern or it's, it's behaving like this certain behavior and um and what's great when you get to that point, when you put in those hours of chart analysis, is that I can go through like the Dow 30. I can go through it in about two minutes because I just go flashing through each stock and my mind will tell me to stop or tell me it recognizes something it likes because I've seen it thousands of times before. And so I can go through the S&P 500 in, in about 15 minutes because I'm not looking at every stock for 10 minutes. I'm looking at every stock for about a second or two and because I put those hours in to recognize the chart patterns my mind will recognize the chart pattern immediately and I'll stop and I'm like oh I'll put that into a on my little yellow sticky note <laughs> and I just keep going and then when I get a big list of stocks on my sticky note then then I can uh, look to see which ones I like best out of that list you know so um these things will start to jump out at you at some point, but you got to put the work in, learn the, you know, learn the rules of thumb and, and get to the point where you start to see them yourself. But I, I point them out when we have these classes, I point them out so you can learn them and see them, see examples of them. All right, let's flip over to the sector list here. Now, you know, one thing I'm concerned about a little bit is that some of these stocks that have been really running, might you might start seeing money come out of these these sectors and move into some of these lower sectors particularly computer and technology down here you might start to see you should start to see computer and technology moving up the list now they don't move quickly up and down these lists um but um you know, there could be a little bit of that rotation that starts to take place these are all very conservative uh, areas well oil and energy just because of the demand for oil right now utilities right here is a safety kind of play transportation has been up up in that area there for a while um but under computer and technology there's a couple i liked uh, i think i mentioned this one on tuesday um, was this electronic uh, maybe i didn't i can't remember if i did or not um flextronics felx um this looks like it could be wave a wave b wave c at about a 50 percent retracement of that move up which is something you, you, that also coincides with this breakout area that previous high 
going back to a buy signal today. And again, this is why I, I don't want to chase the move right here. I don't want to chase it right there because this is exactly what happens. It, it pulls back. And on that pullback, you can tell, hey, this is just, it's holding that trend. It's holding that, that trend. It pulled back to the breakout area. It consolidated a little bit. And then now it's gone back to a buy signal. And then now I've got something I can manage. I could put a stop down below here and have a lot of confidence in that stop. This is where I know I'm probably wrong. Why? If, it, if I am right, it takes off. Not only should it take off and go, but you can use again the range of the correction. Now we don't know if this is the end of the if this is the end of the correction yet, but if it breaks out, you could take the range of that correction, project that upward to give you just a minimum target area. Doesn't mean you have to get out of that area. That gives you something you can visualize that you expect to kind of kind of get to that point. Uh, if it doesn't go up and it comes down and it drops below this area here, well now you've dropped below the breakout and you've broken that uptrend line right there. You're probably wrong. Get out. Stop out. You can have a lot of confidence stopping out because you can say, hey, I, that doesn't look good right now. And so it just gives you a better management of the of the trade when when you when you uh, are patient. If I jumped in and bought right here. Where do I know I'm wrong? Well, you could say, well, if you go back below the breakout area, well, here we dipped a little bit below the breakout area. What if I stopped out here and then went right back up again? You know, you could say, oh, well, if it dips below 50% retracement of that move, it's just harder to manage. Um, I just don't, I don't like, and like I said, I'm not saying that you can't, you can't have a system that works. Um, but if you've got a, a way, a exact way where you place your stop off of chasing a move and, and it works well for you and all that, then you can hold a, hold a class and, and teach people it at some point. And, uh, but, uh, I, I prefer to kind of wait for that, that pullback and patient, wait for that next opportunity. Um, all right. Uh, another one. Under computer and technology was Extreme Networks EXTR. Now this one you definitely want to wait for it to go back to a buy signal. Let me look at a longer term chart here. You can see, uh, you know, it's still kind of has held its longer term trend. It had a burst of a move here correction right through here, impulsive, and it looks like it's had this large ABC correction. And it's starting to go back up. Again, you could wait for it to go back to a buy signal for that extra. And that's typically what we do. Like I said, when we're in, we're in uh, more of a bull, um, a bull market condition. We're not quite in a bull market condition, but we are in more of a bullish trend and we're getting more of these trade opportunities. Um, one of the easiest strategies is just to find stocks that have a hold and have a nice pattern and then wait for them to go to a buy as the confirmation. And then you could put, you know, in this case, you could put a stop below that breakout area if you wanted to. Um, but that one was kind of interesting there. Um, and then one more on, on business services. I like this HHS. Well, I, I kind of like this, this HHS. Uh, well, actually, actually, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, what I wanted to show you on HHS, I remember now, I don't love HHS, just the way it's behaved over the last few days, but this is, I wanted to show you what a, um, you're going to see a lot of these patterns, and this is one of my favorite patterns to, to look to trade is the, the bowl-shaped move. It looks like you've got this bowl-shaped move, and it looks like you're moving up the right side of the bowl. You know, down to here, you had lower highs, lower lows. You flattened out through here, 
Then you broke out. Now you're getting higher highs, higher lows, higher highs. And this could be a higher low right here. It's starting to act like you're moving up the right side of the bowl. What I didn't like, though, and this is what I, I remember now, this is what I wanted to point out, was this looks corrective. This looks impulsive. So I, I'm not quite sure, you know, this could have another move down. And depending on how far that moves down, it may change the the look of that bowl a little bit. So, you know, it was looking pretty good right through here. And then I, I, that's a big question mark right there. Now you could say, well, I'll wait to see if it goes back to a buy signal or wait and see if it can break out above this high. If it doesn't drop any lower and it just keeps going up, breaks out above that high, that could be a good entry point. Uh, as long as it doesn't really go any lower from here. Um, but I, but I, I just want to point that type of shape. If you start to see that on some of these charts you pull up, that's a, that's a good, a good pattern. It, a lot of times it's signaling the start of a new, a new uptrend. Uh, not always, but it, it is one of my favorite patterns to trade. And then real quickly here, I told you I would tell you some Bitcoin stocks. Uh, obviously Coinbase is one. Um, they're kind of a crypto exchange. Although again, remember FTX went, was an exchange that went bankrupt. Coinbase seems to be more stable and, uh, you know, I don't know how well regulated it is, but it, you know, hopefully everybody learned their lesson from what happened to FTX and, and are putting in safeguards in play, but it's had a pretty good move the last few days. Um, getting a little stretched. It's at the far side of the extreme reversal risk range there. But if Bitcoin does continue to, to trend higher, this is a way you could trade a move in Bitcoin. Um, this is probably the safest way out of the, the choices here, though. Mara, M-A-R-A is another one. But this one's a little bit shaky. Um, you know, you're, anytime you're under a $10 stock, you got to be, and you were above it, you're always going to be a little concerned um, about, you know, are they going to, are they going to, be solvent, you can avoid, you know, going bankrupt or anything like that, or could there be any uh, illegal activity going on with some of these? There could be more of a shakeout. A lot of times when you have these these big, you have one of these firms have um, fraud or something like that, there, there could be another one or two that end up, you know, kind of getting in the same thing, have the same problems. But this is one that I've traded in the past, uh, uh, along with Bitcoin moves, with how Bitcoin moves. Back in the 20, 2020 and stuff, it was bullish moves off of some of these stocks. Riot is another one. So there's three. Now, Riot's even, this one's down around $6. It got down to $3 down here. You know, you have to be a little concerned that maybe you're dealing with another Carvana. I don't know what their balance sheets and stuff look like and anything. I don't, I haven't done any fundamental analysis on these, but, uh, um, that's a pretty nice pattern, though, where it's it had a impulsive move up, consolidated, broke out. Again, you can take the distance of the breakout, project that upward. Maybe that's why it's running out of steam a little bit right there. We already know it's, it's uh, well, this one's, it, because of that consolidation right there that it had, that's what's different from Coinbase is that it's, it, um, it moved off the extreme reversal risk into the into the buy range, but it'll probably go back there pretty quick. All right, I got to get to a couple of questions here. Um, On after. Just write down a few ticker symbols here to pull up. Um, All right, one was a question back on Flex. It 
Well, okay. So the question was, is this, is this faded enough here where you, you're, you're not, you know, you wouldn't want to buy into a faded candle like that. Well, that's just it. It's, it, 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 it. A lot of times it can depend on your time frame. Um, now, personally, I'd like to see the market pull back a little bit, bit more uh, to, to really get to. That's why I'm not adding anything to the portfolio. I'd like to see the market pull back a little bit more. Um, but, I mean, like I said, you know, if you're not too worried about timing and, and getting a, a better timing, you know, exact timing. Um, yeah, and assuming it holds as a buy signal, you know, you could deal with it just with how you manage your trade. You get your stop down here. Because maybe maybe this is a little bit of a weak candle and it pulls back a little bit. But most of these candles are very short term in nature, meaning they might just signal a pullback for a day. Um, let me give you an example, just a good example because this is what happened to me on on coinbase coinbase was stretched already it had a bearish inside day right here in almost every case in that condition when you have a, a big run up and, it's, and you're overbought and you get a bearish inside day I would say probably about eight times out of 10, maybe seven times out of 10, you're going to get some pullback out of that where it's going to drop down into, maybe down into this area right here. It just shook it off and took off. Okay. So you never, you know, on, on this particular candle on flex, it, assuming it stays that way into the close too, we got another hour. Because if it rallies back up, it would it would still look fine. But even if it closes like this, this is showing indecision. Um, but and it's showing it could it could open lower. But maybe all it does is it opens down. It just fills in the gap. What if it opens lower tomorrow, fills in that gap that was created when it gapped up today, and then takes off like like Coinbase did. It may take off, and it may not. Maybe it just shakes that off and just takes off tomorrow. Um, and then while, while you were trying to get that perfect entry, you missed a good chunk of the move. So there's always pros and cons uh, with every decision you make. How much confirmation? The more confirmation you get, the more of the move you might miss. Um, the less confirmation you get, the riskier the entry is because it's, it, it, it may not work out. The, there's no right or wrong with those decisions. Usually, the, the biggest thing is that you know the decision. I know when I'm having a more aggressive entry or when I'm, I'm wanting more confirmation. So if I have an aggressive entry, it doesn't work out. I don't, you know, I, I'm like, okay, well, that, that, that makes sense. I I didn't want to wait for that extra confirmation. It didn't pay out for me. Okay, fine. I can live with that. Um, or I, I want to see one more day and then it takes off on me and I don't, I don't want to chase it now. It's like, okay, I missed that because I wanted one more day of confirmation. Okay, I'm okay with that because I understand what I'm doing. That's, that's really what it comes down to. Um, but, you know, I don't know that I would – if I was, if I'm looking at more of a, now if I'm looking at a short term trade, I'm looking for something for the next couple of days, get in, get out, then no, I wouldn't buy in on a candle like that because it, it, you could have two or three days where it pulls back. And, and, and in three or four days when it goes, or maybe it's, it, it does come deeper here or something like that. Um, if I'm looking at being in this thing for the next year or next several months, I'm not going to get too hung up on that pattern, that candle pattern. I'm going to just manage it, put a stop down below here or something. I'm going to risk this, that the stock is going to go up that much or something like that. And I've got good reward to risk at that point. All right. Um, there's a comment here on EITO. Oh, another, another Bitcoin. Proxy. Um, some of these you have to you have to keep.
keep an eye on liquidity though too. Um, how liquid are they? Um, and uh, I don't know. I don't know much about this one. To, like I said, I'm not a huge Bitcoin person anyway. But um, that could be one if it, you can do some research on that one. Uh, C A B A. Uh, I mean that's that's been a nice steady uptrend. It's just it, it, these. What I don't like about some of these type of charts is that it's hard hard for me to read them because it, this looks this looks corrective, but it's going up and up and up and up and up. Um, you know, it's 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 kind of choppy as it moves higher there, um, but it's steadily gone higher. So, you know, if you're in this thing, there's, there'd be no reason to to yeah, there's no reason to get out of that. It's got a 99 strength rank. It just kind of keeps chugging upward. Um, you know, that's a pretty big move. You know, uh, without a, a, a decent correction, which always worries me that uh, about the time you get in, it decides to go into a, a corrective mode, correct some of that move. But um, but like I said, if you're already in it, um, you know, no no reason to get out. You're not an extreme risk, a reversal risk yet. Uh, C B A Y. I wouldn't chase um, this move. 99 strength. It's strong uptrend. I just wouldn't chase it. Um, you're probably. I'd, I'd wait for that next. And again, it doesn't have to pull back. It may just do that again. I'd want to see a little bit of a consolidation. Yeah, I usually don't chase. I don't usually don't chase charts like this, though. Um, I usually would like to see a, a bigger pullback. Um, not that it couldn't keep going higher, but that's. I, I always like to see that that pullback, that consolidation, get some of those the froth out of it a little bit. I always feel a little more comfortable. But that's me. Like I said, if you got a system where you can trade that and and make great money with it, then more power to you. And then rig, I'll finish up with, I gotta wrap things up. Uh, same thing, I wouldn't chase that. Bearish, bearish engulfing pattern, uh, candle pattern of the day, probably signaling that it's getting ready to pull back a little bit. Again, we talk, talk, showed the oil chart where oil, some of the oil stocks are getting a little bit weak. Dollar might rally a little bit. That would put a little bit of pressure on it. Now, longer term, I'd like this one because um, I think that um, you're seeing more. There's, there, there, there is a push to to get more production, oil production, more rigs out there. Um, but I'd kind of see if it again it doesn't have to pull back. But I'd like to see it consolidate at least a little bit, correct a little bit. That's just my personal preference. All right. That's all I have. Have a great week, everyone. We'll see you back here next Tuesday for the next uh, market update. Bye now.